Hey my people, how are you doing? I hope you're damn good day, welcome back to the channel. It's going to be the Marcus Rashford career mode episode number 3 and we start off today's episode with a massive game against West Ham United. West Ham United have probably been the best team outside the top 6. You know, best of the rest. And I mean, the squad, the players that they, they have in their starting lineup, I mean, a lot of them could get into some of the top six sides. I mean, Declan Rice is one of them, Suchik another. I mean, the fact that they went ahead and signed Skamaka. I mean, Skamaka was linked with PSG. He was linked with Manchester United and ultimately he decided to go to West Ham. And I think with his abilities, his unique aerial abilities, of course, he suits West Ham United quite a bit. And um, I don't know why I'm talking about West Ham so much. But in this one, they were very tough to break down. They were very well co constructed, essentially compact defensively, waiting, drawing us in, waiting to counter attack. And it was their game plan all along, just to come and make sure that we got a bit ruffled. I mean, we did get that early first goal through the likes of yours truly, Marcus Rashford. But essentially, their game plan was never to come and, and, uh, and attack us head on because we could easy counter-attack them. They they played the long game and they waited and they waited. I mean, the first corner came and went to Lucas Plaqueta. Um, he made it look very easy getting over the likes of Mark Trash. And then the second one resulted in the goal. The exact same set piece, the exact same thing happened. This time though, it happened with the Plaqueta goal in the back of the net. And that was frustrating because the Nottingham Forest game just destroyed this whole team confidence. And I mean, this draw again, late on in a game where 1 0 up, trying to hold on to that victory, and we couldn't. I mean, as you can see there, I had one shot, converted it of course, but one shot. West Ham were brilliant in making sure that the link up play between the striker and the midfield was nullified completely. So. Yeah, we take a point. I mean, London Stadium is great, but we take a point nonetheless. And we move on, though. We move on to England. I'm coming on for Bukayo Saka. He's, uh, I think he was playing as the right wing in this one. So, at least it's not as a cam. I mean, I hate playing as the cam. I, I think the fact that Rashford is such a, a quick player, a fast player, his um, talents get wasted a, a by a lot and um, the fact that I was brought on as a winger I was quite happy although I was not happy with the number that I was given number 13 really 13 is such an odd number especially for an attacking player but a bit of skill gets passed by Stoney and then smashes it into the roof of the net Donnarumma was nowhere to be found whatsoever I mean he is a very tall goalkeeper so if you put it anywhere close to him or somewhat close to it's probably going to save that and speaking of saves jordan pickford wearing number 12 um with an absolutely outstanding save i mean he he's the reason why we were able to hang on in this one and get the the good three points against italy of course a lot of history between italy and england especially especially recent history with the euro final of course it's going to win that so the fans they were a lot happier after the result and probably could have played better as a team i think the introduction of of rashford was a big one uh, the team did pick up the performance levels quite a bit when i came on so you know what fair play i get an 8.2 rating one shot one goal conversion rate of 100 percent playing on the right i don't mind playing on the right it's just uh, playing behind the front three doesn't make sense to me. But again, coming on from Bukayo Saka in the next one against the Czech Republic. And in this situation, I think getting the points is the most important thing. I mean, the Czech Republic, they are a tough team, yes, but they're not as tough as the likes of Croatia or Italy, for example. So I did have faith that we were going to score in this one at least. And um, again, Southgate putting me on the corners, and I, I really like that. I wish I could take more corners for Manchester United because obviously it's just something cool that you can do. And uh, speaking of something cool that you can do, damn well, Phil Foden can do that. Great work from Harry Kane. He's supposed to be the one getting the ball in the box, but this time it's the blue side of Manchester that scored the goal for England. And um, it looks like Manchester itself is just carrying this England team. Last game it was Rash, but this game it's Phil Foden. And the Czech Republic almost getting back into it. Great save yet again from T-Rex Arms, aka Jordan Henderson. And uh, yeah, we would hold on for the victory. Very happy with that. Jude Bellingham also played an outstanding game 
in in this one and i hope that maybe manchester united of course in real life but in the game can go on and sign to Bailey Hughes. i think he'd be a great addition to the team and uh yeah i i did very little in this not going to lie 6.2 rating 13 minutes played and nada not even a shot. <laughs> I was brought on to run up and down the right hand side. But uh, we, we go back to Manchester now and uh, kick things off at St. James's Park. Yeah, St. James's Park. We were talking about best of the rest earlier and in real life Newcastle United are that team. And I mean it's, it's a big thanks to the likes of Eddie Howe of course, the investment that they've got from their new owners, but just the, the entire vibe and feel of Newcastle United is completely different to what it was this time last year. And um, speaking of investment though, one of their new signings, Sven Bartman, off of a corner, smashes it home for a 1-0 lead for yeah, Newcastle United. And I just feel like the team at the moment is just very out of sync. I, I think we got off to a brilliant start. And um, like I said earlier, the, the Nottingham Forest draw literally stomped out any momentum that we had created and yeah it, it just left us wanting a bit more and great goal by the way can i just say great corner i thought bruno fernandez had just headed it home looking at the replay bruno fernandez the ball was traveling slightly wide and Varane was there to steer it home so very happy with that and the fact that we got back into this game but after we got back into the game and i think it's down to to my performance in this one we, we just couldn't capitalize on it. Like the, the momentum was on our side, everything was going for us, and Newcastle United waited it out, and they got themselves back in this game. And as you can see, the highlights are very evenly split in this one because it was a very even game. And um, some poor first touch ability from Victor Lindelof led to Kokichu, I think it was Kokichu, um, winning the ball back, passing it off to, to Isaac, and then getting the ball back into an open space in our box and smashing it home for a 2-1 win on the day. Wow, we are dropping points like crazy right now. And what's irritating to me is I want to win the Premier League this season. And we are very capable of, of winning five, six, seven, maybe even eight games in a row. But we need to start picking up points because, I mean, it's only Halloween, but sooner or later the season's going to end and I don't want it to be said that if we had drawn against Newcastle we could have um, won the Premier League or if we had beaten Nottingham Forest we could have won the Premier League. I want us to be picking up points and at least if we are losing, lose in a dignified way because the way we lost against Newcastle United was a a, like genuinely a, a car wreck because we should have played a lot better. I mean, my goals for the season are probably to hopefully win the Premier League and go for the Europa League. And I mean, great run in the Europa League at the moment. I mean, winning 3-0 in our previous game, but it's not the, the main trophy I want to win. I would like to win the Premier League, so... But back into the Premier League though, Aston Villa, Steven Gerrard, recently sacked from Villa in real life, but in this one, he, uh, his Villa side were very good, I must say. At Old Trafford, the crowd against him, he knows that, and um, so does Villa, and Villa did a very good job in making sure that they sit back, remain compact, remain composed, of course, composure is the biggest thing in football, and they were quite happy to give us corner after corner after corner, because they knew that if the ball doesn't land on Varane or Casemiro's head, we're probably not scoring. I mean, Rashford, yes, he's six foot, but his heading ability is left wanting most times. And I mean, the rest of the team, they lack a lot of height. So, like I say, Villa were quite happy to to sit back, counter attack. And I mean, they, they set up very well. I mean, Ollie Watkins, um, Leon Bailey, of course, great players to, to have on the break because they are very, very fast. And um, 23 minutes gone by, smashing it home for a one more lead, you say victory, but a 1-0 lead, salutes the fans, very happy with that, it's the goal that we've been needing in games, I mean we've gone down, well we've gone behind the goal um, in previous games and we've, we've left ourselves wanting more because we, we've fallen behind so early, and in this one we got a goal in front, but again, we got in front and then we took a foot off the gas and it allowed John McGinn to fire a shot straight into the back of our net moments after scoring our first goal 
and then in the second half, Lucas Moura recently got subbed on and um, smashed it <laughs> home for a, for a goal. And I was so frustrated, I immediately requested this sub. I was like getting off this damn field. I'm so tired of my damn teammates letting down the team. I mean, Lindelof in the previous game with a heavy touch, and this one, I, I think it was Casemiro, or it could have been Cruz for the John McGinn goal, and yeah, it was so frustrating. But we would end up losing that game 2-1, and then days later we would lose a game against Casemiro 2-1 in the EFL. I think it's the Carabao Cup, actually, not the, I was going to say the EFL Cup, which it is true, but I was meant to say the Carabao Cup. But, yeah, just uh, just getting punched in the mouth right now, and I, this this episode alone made me really question whether I should continue playing a, play a career mode, because you have no control over over the, the other players and when they make mistakes you're like but why i would never make that stupid mistake or that terrible error or i just want you to go in for a tackle right now but yeah it just left me wanting more and um i must say it does make me appreciate the victories a bit more well. <laughs> a lot and um going into our final game against wolverhampton wanderers jose Sal was absolutely incredible i know we got that early goal through yours truly but after that, like every chance that we had, his gloves were on it, or his legs were thrown at it, and he would make saves. And uh, later on in the second half, Bruno Fernandes to the likes of Anthony, and believe me, I celebrated this goal so, so hard, because recently in games, we've been able to score a goal, but not the second, or not the third. And in this one, my goodness, it took a while. I mean, to be fair, Wolves offered no attacking threat, so I wasn't too worked up in terms of that, or conceding chances at least, but this goal, it meant the world to me. And Anthony with a, a somewhat of no look um, shot, and it just beats Jose So If he had missed that, I would have been fuming, because then, you see, it still leaves time for Wolves to get back into it. And um, yeah, I have a bit of a talking to by the ref here. He is not having it. I think it might be Anthony Taylor. I was surprised he didn't book me. I did kind of go with a few studs showing towards, um, Collins, but nonetheless, I escaped. No booking, no booking required. And um, Ten Hag, he had seen enough of me for the day. Very happy with that performance. Ronaldo subs on an 8.6 rating, one goal, one shot. Of course, we continue the trend of having one shot a game. It needs to improve if we're going to improve. But yeah, very happy with this result though. It was a big three points needed. I mean, at this point in the season, we've only played a few games, but we sit eighth in the table after a great start this episode and the back end of the last kind of has let us down a bit so hopefully in the next one we do well and until then guys i hope you have a damn great day and i'm out